Okay, class, we have already tackled the effects of faulting on relief on the landscape. This time, let us look at the effects of faulting on drainage, water supply. Number one, faulting leads to the formation of rift valley lakes. Remember, we saw rift valleys under the effects of faulting on relief. So when these rift valleys are filled with water, they form rift valley lakes. For example, Lake Chivu, Lake Tanganyika, Lake Malawi, etc. Two, faulting leads to the formation of graben lakes. We saw grabens. These are depressions formed within a rift valley as a result of secondary faulting. So when they are filled with water, they also become graben lakes. Next, faulting leads to the formation of waterfalls. These are sharp points across rivers with steep cliffs where the river water keeps on dropping at that steep cliff. That happens when faulting occurs across the river channel. Faulting leads to the formation of fault-guided rivers. Remember, we looked at fault-guided valleys. So, when rivers keep on flowing, following the fault-guided valleys, they are called fault-guided rivers. In Rwanda, we have a river like Nyabarongo and the Rusizi. Next, indirectly, faulting helps in the formation of hot springs because it is through these cracks within the rocks that water follows. The water follows these lines of weaknesses and it is extruded on acid surface to form a hot spring or a geyser. Without faulting, these cracks would not have been formed. And without these cracks, this water would not have been extruded to form a hot spring. It leads to river reversal. The river may change its direction because it is following maybe a fault guided valley, and this is a big influence. Thank you.